this is Firebase. I'm your host, Gary French. We want to welcome you to this evening's show, and we hope and pray that you'll find this very informative for you. Let me share what Firebase is all about. We, we like to say we want to target lies and fire for effect with the truth. Firebase is U.S military terminology, which means the, the center of operations where you, you target the enemy. That's our focus at Firebase is to target lies and to bring forth the truth. And, and it's not my truth, it's the truth from a Judeo-Christian worldview. Well, with that in mind, let me ask you this question. Can a zebra change its stripes? I heard that question when I was a kid, can a zebra change its stripes? And, and for me, the answer is, of course not. Well, the, the Bible in Jeremiah 13 rephrases that this way. Let me read that for you. It's a very similar question. It says, why has this happened to me? Which is saying, why is bad things going on? And the answer is this. It's because of the magnitude of your iniquity. And the question is posed this way. Can an Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? And then he says, you're not able to do good because of the, the immensity, the magnitude of your own sin. Well, can you or I change our skin color by thinking about it? Can we change our gender by thinking about it? Can the person who says, I was born one sex, now I'm thinking I want to be another one, can they change that just by their thought, their mental assent? Some people would say, if you just make a decision, then you're going to change everything. Well, on tonight's program, we're going to be talking about transgenderism. And, and I've got to say, I am thrilled to have Star Parker with me this evening. I, I've been a fan of hers a long time. I can even say it like this, a pun on her name, I am starstruck with Star Parker. And I've seen her on Fox News, and a few weeks ago I saw her on Flashpoint with a gentleman I know, Gene Bailey, and was impressed not only with her presence, but with uh, the way that she was able to articulate her position. Well, she is the founder of Urban Cure, and their mission is to address issues of race and poverty from a Christian conservative worldview and perspective. Let's welcome Star Parker and ask her, tell us a little bit about Urban Cure. Star? Oh, thank you. I look forward to this opportunity to be with you and your audience to talk about such an incredibly important topic during this time. Um, people get very, very lost when there's not someone out there expressing truth. So I'm exactly. so glad that you're doing that and using the Word of God to make those points. Uh, because I can look at my own life and talk about how real this is that someone is speaking truth. Uh, I was one as a young woman who got caught up in the lies of the left, as I like to call them, very early in life, even before I was a young woman. I was listening to those that would say, your problems aren't your fault. Uh, America's racists don't mainstream, you're right. poor because others are wealthy. And in believing those lies and not being able to balance with truth, uh, I got very reckless. I thought that, hey, this is all there is, then I'm going for it. So really early on, I was involved in criminal activity and drug activity and sexual activity. I was in and out of abortion clinic after clinic. Wow. I then had a child, still not married, and ended up on welfare. And that's where God found me and saved me. Well, uh, so it's out of your own background. What's that? It's out of your own background and life experiences that God shaped the bad things and said, this is what I need you to do, Star. Just incredibly so. I mean, once I was introduced to the Lord and found out that God was in Christ, that it was reconciling the world to himself, that he wasn't counting my sin against me, that he loved me, that he had a plan for my life. He had died for me so that I could fulfill that plan. I adopted those values and still do everything I can to hold to them until today. And so I went back to college, I got a degree, I started a business. After the 1992 Los Angeles riots destroyed my business, I had already moved into ideas of social thought and social policy. We wow. then were reforming wow. welfare at the time, so I uh, consulted on federal welfare reform in the 90s and began then this process of starting what we call today Urban Cure or CurePolicy.org. Uh, because we're looking at market-based solutions to fight poverty. We believe that fighting poverty and restoring dignity can be done through messages of faith and wow. freedom and personal responsibility. Hey. Amen. Amen. I agree with that. But when we look at where that. we are today and on the yeah. things that you're yeah. approaching on your show, uh, we have a long way to go to rebuild culture so that we can really free people that are still in despair or making the kind of decisions well, I let, was let me for Let now. me interrupt you real quick. We've got, I've got a friend of mine that's a, a police officer who was in a Spike Lee film 
black man loves the Lord now, and he had this very similar experience. It goes from a Democrat to a conservative Christian. But when we come back from this short break, I want to ask uh, Star this question. As we talk about transgenderism, what's the big deal? Uh, is, is it a big deal? Should we Christians even be concerned about that? So we're asking you folks to stay right there where you are and just hold on. You're going to be impressed with the answers as we talk from a biblical worldview, transgenderism. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We're glad you stayed with us. Before the break, we were talking with Star Parker, and she was telling us about her, her experience and how she, God led her into business and where she is today. And, and let me tell you, uh, as this is a paraphrase of uh, Joe Biden, uh, but I'll say it like this. I even hate to say that name, but if, if you don't know Star Parker, you ain't conservative. My friends, you've got to know that she is standing up not only for conservative values, but from a Christian perspective. Before the break, Star, I asked you a question about, about transgenderism, and, and, I, and I want to go back to that. And people will say, you Christians, you just, you're lunatics, you're, you're fretting over nothing. So let me just ask you, what's the big deal with transgenderism? Should we be concerned? Well, we should be very concerned because we've been in a cultural war for a very long time in our country, but actually it started in the Garden of Eden. Uh, when you think about what God said, <laughs> this is right. yours, that's mine. When you think about how he spoke to Adam and Eve uh, and created, he said he created, he created male and female. What we're looking at today with this philosophy of LGBTQ and their agenda and their movement wow. is a direct assault on that particular scripture that said God created. Uh, this worldview of LGBTQ is rooted in monism. Monism is the elimination of gender binary. That's exactly. what we're working with right now. People that really believe that God does not exist, so therefore his creation has to stop. And the only thing standing in the way of their philosophy and God's truth is that biological clock of the woman. So they've been for generations trying to manipulate that clock. We saw it through birth control, we see it right. through abortion, and now we're seeing it through this entire LGBTQ uh, movement. The challenge for us is the T is very vile because the T is experimental. It's taking medical science and moving it into arena of culture and moving it into arena where people are getting very lost at very young ages because they've been distracted by the development of their bodies without right. God's truth to tell them which way to take those energies. Uh, and so people are manipulated and, and then they're doing surgeries uh, that are life changing. Uh, we should be extremely concerned about what is happening, not just yeah. to these individuals who really are lost and need his help, but also for what it's doing to our youth because they're teaching it in school as young as kindergarten. Yeah, well, in truth, that transforms under uh, the late D. James Kennedy ministry. They've done a lot of extensive research on uh, the mutilation that's done to the body by a person and who wants to change their gender and they'll come back and it's almost to a person from what they've shown that they regret the decisions that they made especially when they awaken their lives not to just their body but to Jesus Christ is that well, especially is that some to of the Jesus Christ a and he yeah, does say amen them. and I'm and I'm so thankful and I'm so thankful for those that are witnessing now to say you know I walked down that path it was a horrible path but thank God that he transformed me as I was talking about what he did in my own personal life amen. He, you mentioned your friend who used to be a Democrat I never had to go that route I was so <laughs> lost I didn't do the political thing by the time the pastor said you need to be voting uh, I was already well saved reading a proverb a day so I just read the party platform but well, you know I, is, isn't um, that the real the key one consistent with me was my was the Republican Party Star, isn't that, but, isn't that the real key issue there, that people are adhering to societal pressure rather than what the Word of God says? Well, some of it is, but let's think about what has happened in our culture. When we think about going back to the 60s, when we really started seeing this aggression from the political left, if you will, and or the progressives, they removed God from our schools. Uh, then we saw this feminist movement that really brought in the family, traditional family life into question. And then they compounded it with a welfare state that said, don't think about any consequences to any of your sexual uh, impulses because now we have safety nets. Five yeah. years after Dr. King was killed, we then had abortion as national law. So people are very lost. When you're raised without a mom and dad in a healthy household, exactly. uh, the scripture is clear that the glory of children is their father. Exactly. This is not... This is, this is what the Bible tells us. So when you don't have a dad to channel your energies, whether it's a young girl to affirm her, whether it's a young boy to, right. to get him 
interested in sports and schools, uh, that starts to get out into the street and or in our sexual it, patterns. It really so does. Some people are just lost and they've been taken advantage of by a very, very aggressive progressive left. Well, it, and it sort of brings me, you know, I, in, in prepping for this show, I, a great intern, Evan, just gave me a bunch of material and I just, I'm sort of like Columbo. You know, I write the, the evidence down on pieces of paper and and some of the things that what you're talking about is wokeism here in the United States and uh, allowing for transgender people. And when Biden became president, the very first day his executive order was allowing for the taxpayer to pay for a transgender surgery in the military. Tr uh, sensitivity training, uh, white fra uh, fragility, privilege. Uh, and he says that currently the main lines of separation between oppressors and the oppressed are the race, the sex, and gender identity. And, and as I continued research, searching through this, pardon me, I pull up my Columbo notes, I found from 1836, Charles Finney, in a book called The Church Mutt, or The uh, Hindrances to Revival, he wrote 185 years ago, he says, the church must take the right ground in politics. So he was encouraging churches and, and pastors to take a stand. And, when I see what's happening in our society, as you've just articulated, why does it seem that we are so timid? Well, I think people have become very comfortable today. And let's face it, when you apply the principles of Christianity, the virtues of capitalism, and you have a rule of law that's rooted in our constitution, you can become very blessed. We are blessed as a people. We have a thriving and great middle class. And so Christians then become very comfortable. They buy ideas of safety and security and ideas of comfort. And then they'll put everything in front of Christ to say, wait a minute, there was another side of his equation. He said, I want to know you and the power of your resurrection share but there's another part to enter into the fellowship of his suffering and when you think about eternity and why it's so important that we have people become born again it's because you can get lost Amen. so when our culture started getting lost and Christians started getting comfortable and quiet uh, you're looking at what we have today where you have people sitting in it. the White House I love it. that do not believe in the Bible uh, the tenets of the Bible and are promoting these types of evils amongst all of us including as you pointed out in our military in our schools. And so it's a very difficult position that we're in because when you think about the hard part of these lifestyle choices, you're going to die in those choices. We're stealing legacy from parents. I have a friend, their only son decided he wanted to walk in his homosexual uh, tendencies, if you will. Right. And as a result, she doesn't get grandchildren. So their wow. family heritage wow. dies. Wow. I don't think people are recognizing the damage that's done to traditional, that's right. generational family that's right. life, leaving a legacy type of life uh, when we allow for all of these interferences into what God said in Genesis. Well, I, Star, I feel like I should just be shouting amen to what you're saying there, sister, as you're, as you're talking along the way. It makes me think of... Uh, uh, Janet Boynes, who has recovered from a lesbian lifestyle, and she encountered Christ, and he and Christ totally changed uh, her life. Uh, speaking to a friend of mine from the Pentagon area, and he is uh, a political analyst, and he says one of the reasons that we conservatives we just sort of we're happy with the little short victory if we get one. And you made mention of eternal. We don't look at the long run. We, you know, we're the old song says we're to work till Jesus comes. And we, somehow we seem to be complacent and only work in a, for this election rather than for the next hundred years outside of Jesus returning. But we've got to look at the long issue. We, how do we, how do we trans, transition? How do we get people to say to be energized rather than saying, vote for me, vote for this person? We've got about two minutes before our next break. How, how do you well, respond to that? You're, talk, you're talking about two different areas now. When we talk about the individual Christian who has disconnected themselves from the culture to say, I just hope it doesn't come to a neighborhood near me, but it is now in their neighborhood, so we're starting to see more activism. But when you're talking about the conservative, the politically aware and astute, we've been in this battle for 60 years, so it's just putting out fires. And so you're right. It can seem like there's an over instance the emphasis on just getting from election to election. Yeah. And then when you get in power, you don't know what to do because you've not thought about it. You've just been putting out these um, these little fires. And we're here at Cure put, taking away the matches. Uh, that's why we're in Washington. That, you know, that's we really one of the, believe that if we go after that weakest link and we absolutely. strengthen it, that little lost sheep, and we strengthen them, if we go after the clergy and educate them, if we continue to stay in the media, and if we work right here on Capitol Hill to change policy, to change laws, 
laws, you then change lives. So yeah, it can seem frustrating that we're from election to election because our elections come very rapidly. But oh, I'm glad boy. that they do because every two years we get to self-correct. Well, we, we're coming up on a break here, but that, it just made me think, I, I, I've, I've followed your career with great interest. Do, do you ever get, well, I'm sure you do, this is a sort of a stupid question, what kind of pushback do you get because you're a, a female and you're a black lady? I mean, do you have people saying, you shouldn't vote that way, you shouldn't be this way, you should be this other way? Well, they, we, they do it, I'm sure, but I, I have a wonderful team here to make sure that I don't get you those sure do. messages. I get the blessing messages. But another point that I want to make on that uh, is that, you know, when people uh, oppose someone because of their ethnicity and or their gender, uh, because they have come to some conclusions, uh, whether it's a biblical conclusion or conclusions of freedom, it should wake up others to say, wait a minute, maybe there's something deeper I should look at. So Amen. actually for every hit we get, uh, I get a, a benefit. Uh, but when President Trump came to town and the, and the aggressive left came unglued, uh, it did create a hard environment, not just for myself, but many of those that work closely with him, that I am in a security protection program today and I had to move out of my personal home. And at first I was frustrated even in that, but then I realized the freedom involved to where now they don't know where I am and I don't care what they say. Uh, it's actually <laughs> allowed me to walk in the steps of uh, I love it. a little I bit love minor. It. So. Yeah. <laughs> I love that courage that you display right there. I mean, that's that's awesome. And, and for me, when I see that and I hear your story, that's in a microcosm, that's how we Christians should be. No fear, because God hasn't given us a spirit of fear and our home right. is secure. That's I right. hear that when from you, look you at, as well. Especially when you look at those that went before us. I mean, they laid their lives down and it was a lot more difficult. Now we're afraid even to speak up on our job. So yeah. uh, I agree with you. I, I, I remind myself, often of those that went before them. My heroes are people like Joan of Arc, and I keep Mother Teresa hung up wherever I am in whichever room I'm in, uh, to make sure that I realize that some people went before us and dedicated much more than I'm being asked to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that if, um, if more would get that message that are sitting in the church, then they, they may change their school. They may actually change their community, and they may even change the political environment if they start really looking at it. their life as one part of a bigger Christian story. Well, if they tune in to you and, and to my show, which I hope that they are, uh, you know, and I just feel like saying like this, sister, if they tune in or watch Keep Up With Urban Cure, they will be changed for the better. And, and I'm, just, I'm just confident about that because God's called you for such a time as this, and I admire you. And uh, in 2016, I was the only uh, pastor at the time that was invited to hear Donald Trump and Ben Carson in New York City. Wow. And I'm the only guy out of all of Kentucky. And you know what? Praise God that he took me there. We've got a, a short break right here. Star, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, folks. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us through the break. We have had a very quick 30 minute program here with, uh, and I've just got to say the delightful Star Parker. Uh, she epitomizes what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I like to call it like this, more than just a Christian. She's a serious Christian and she's a disciple. Uh, and uh, Sister Star, I don't know who discipled you, but as they say in my hometown where I grew up, they done good uh, to help you out on that. Well, we've well, talked about- still doing it. My, dis well, my, my disciple is King Solomon, and so I read a proverb a day to keep the devil away. Hey. And, um, and I appreciate that because I was even thinking with the Lord this morning in my prayer time how beneficial uh, his Amen. proverbs have been to me because I could have spent the rest of my life in jail, and I would have spent yeah. the rest of my yeah. life in jail. My criminal behaviors escalated to even armed robbery. So I'm thankful every day that he would choose me to do this for him, uh, and I don't take it lightly at all. Yeah. So I appreciate those compliments. But Amen. Uh, I'm constantly reminding myself that yet by his grace, I would be where uh, those that I'm trying to reach are today. Yeah, the, I mean, the scripture reminds us, humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will exalt you. And, and I, I see the journey I'm I've been on. still waiting for that part. Doesn't that come with riches too? I'm still <laughs> waiting for that part. <laughs> Amen. We're still at the God supplies my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Amen. Jesus day by day. Well, <laughs> Reminding Matthew, ourselves of what, what Saint, uh, David said, what King David said that, okay, Lord, don't make Amen. me too rich or too poor. Amen. Just kind of keep me, I, just keep me fed though. <laughs> Star, there have been a few times. I know the Bible says that God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And there have been times yeah. I've been little thin and meek and, and weak. And I said, Lord, would you sell a few head for me? Cause I need so some I'm income. Bring them down here. I'll yeah. Take care of your 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah. you know, we. But he's been he's been good, and and I and I appreciate that. And it Amen. is important that Amen. we uh, keep the message going and allow him to then do what he does to keep us out there to keep the message going because it's too critical to our to our nation. As you mentioned earlier, yeah. this transgenderism, people are really struggling in that right now. They don't know who they are. We have over four hundred thousand kids in our foster system and they're experimenting on them. Uh, so we really need to make sure that Christians oh. understand uh, yeah. their role in today's culture. Yeah, it, well, you know, uh, and Tony Evans says that we need to be visible, verbal followers of Jesus Christ. And our, our governor uh, here in Kentucky, uh, Governor Bashir, is, I like to call it the communist commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, he's, he's threatening to close uh, Sunrise Children's Home, which you talk about adoption and getting kids out because his money, his backing comes from the abortion people. And I, I don't know what it will take to get people awakened to that. And, but I, I think with what you're doing and hopefully with what I'm trying to do, we can see a great awakening. And Andrew Walmack was talking this morning with David Barton about the very need that we are in an awakening. And how, how do we combat, I mean, knowing that we are in a great awakening right now with this systemic racism that we have and the woke attitude and the transgender and what is well, some of your encouragement to people? Awakening. I, but I do know that it is very dark, and it might have to get much darker. You mentioned your state. You had an incredible governor. You had an incredible governor in Mike Bevin. And Hallelujah. And conservatives started picking it apart one little baby issue at a time and lost sight of the bigger picture that you had amazing pro-life, pro-God governor. So, yeah, yeah, it might have to get extremely dark in Kentucky. Kentucky is a beautiful state. Kentucky has contributed so much to this country. Even you want to go into the little race issues that people are pointed to. Kentucky is what where uh, Fort Nelson is housed. It's now yeah. a national uh, memorial because of Donald Trump. And, and making it a national memorial, we have a place exactly. where the country had to make a decision at the Civil War time whether we were going to be biblical and free or whether we were going to be um, secular and status. And that's the same question we're looking at today. So how do we do it? We remind ourselves of our rebirth at that moment, Amen. and we don't allow Amen. Marxist communists to change the country. They're after the founding principles because the founding of this country was rooted in a Judeo-Christian heritage. Absolutely. Period. Absolutely. You know, there's, uh, uh, in 1956, a former vice president, and had to be under Truman, I guess, uh, lay on his deathbed. He was a former senator from Kentucky. And when asked about his contributions prior to his death, he said of the things that he had done, he says the greatest service was to have served Jesus Christ. And, and I, I think that, that echoes and mirrors exactly what you've just said about the need for us to take a stand. Well, friends, tonight we've had Star Parker with us. There she is on the screen again for you. And Star, it's been a delight. Uh, to be with. We look forward to your coming back again in the very near future. I've, I've loved working with your staff and our folks here. It's been a positive experience and I want to thank the staff that we've got here helping to put this together, uh, whether in the, in the mixing room or the sound or the camera. Without their help it couldn't be done and we're going to encourage people to like us on social media and to be a part of it. Star, thanks so much and folks, thanks for viewing. We'll see you next time. <laughs>